Now our speaker will be, uh, is Wilson Mello and the talk is about blockchains for monitoring critical infrastructures, learning from data and measurement. Wilson is a researcher at the Brazilian Institute of Metrology Quality and Technology in Metro and a lecturer at Metrology Postgraduation Program since 2019. He holds a PhD in informatics from Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, and his main expertise regards software for industrial applications, especially solutions related to measurement, control, pattern recognition, and cybersecurity. Welcome, Mr. Wilson. Thanks for your participation in this event, and you can go ahead with your presentation. Thank you so much, Rodolfo. I think you have my screen, all right? Yes. Yes, okay. So let's put in the presentation mode. People, thank you everyone for the invitation to be here with you today. It's, there is a, a very specific advantage in it to be one of the last ones to speak because uh, my partners already talk a lot of concepts, interesting topics about blockchain. So I can use the, the topics and the concepts that I already described to you to explain my, the ideas we are looking for and to bring something more related to what we are have been doing in the last five years. Well, uh, I am from Metro. Uh, I work in the laboratory of metrology and informatics, the acronym is LAINF, and our activities are too much related to cybersecurity when you apply it to the scope of metrology and especially measuring instruments. So there are several activities that you develop in LAINF, and blockchains is one of the research topics. And you have also uh, a good team to work here in LAINF because we are a team of six uh, PhD researchers, and also you have uh, working with uh, several students, even from the graduated, graduated students, they also undergraduate. And uh, since 2019, we have a cooperation with the PTB and the University of Lisbon to develop some talks related to research in blockchain and its applications to the metrology. So uh, what we have done in the last five years, I would say, is very interesting to note that the, the topic uh, related to the blockchain and metrology together. That's why I am writing blockchain plus metrology because I'm considering the two knowledge areas working together. And since 2018 so far, uh, we are working in different talks and made important contributions in several aspects. So uh, here I have just a, a, a brief description about a timeline in terms of our research achievements and mentioning the works that have been developed for other partners from people in the PTB, Dr. Peters, Dr. Uh, Moni, and there is an important steps that feel so far. And we could ask what will be our next steps from here? Yes, and I would like to start with three ideas that I will develop in, 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 during this presentation. Because uh, in my point of view, we are in a moment that where we need uh, more practical projects. And what I, I want to say by that, because so far uh, we have a lot, made a lot of research in blockchains and metrology, usually in topics that are too much related to new ideas that are not so practical at the moment. So sometimes you have some ideas, oh, you can use blockchain to build a system like that. But uh, when you look after the idea, you see that there are a lot of things to do before you could propose a practical uh, application using blockchains. So sometimes you have the difficult in to propose ideas that are more practical, more effective for the moment that we are living now. The second aspect that I would call attention is that you need uh, to fill the gap between our metrologists and people, and when I say people, I am referring to people that uh, use uh, uh, measuring instruments. For instance, meters, manufacturers, or even users. Because in many times when they talk about, for instance, to the manufacturer about to use blockchain in any practical projects, usually he look after me, uh, look at me and say, I will not do that because not practical to me is not, it's not resulting any profit from my business, so I would like to 
uh, uh, look after some of our practical ideas, then use blockchains in my uh, product or in my solution. And the third aspect that I would like to emphasize is the uh, maybe you are need more easy understanding examples to apply. So uh, I feel the same when I talk, for instance, about uh, blockchains for uh, public, key, uh, public key infrastructures for smart meters, because people many times are very far from this reality when they talk about that. So that's possible to bring some examples that people will be identified a little more because it's more uh, close to them in the day by day or they can understand more easily. That is the question. And when I talk about these topics, I would like to, to talk a little about critical infrastructures. And when I talk critical infrastructures or CIs like you uh, could hear, uh, I talk about cyber physical uh, critical infrastructures because they are the ones because they are the ones that need sensing. And since you talk about sensing, you are also talking about measurements. And wherever I have measurements, I also need metrology there. And besides, it's possible to consider that critical infrastructures they are crucial to economy, business, people safety, environment conditions, even for the national sovereignty in the countries. So when we talk about that, we are talking about really good information. If I am monitoring a, a CI infrastructure, it is necessary to have reliable information. And of course, blockchains are a very interesting approach to provide that. So you can make several questions about how are we collecting information about our critical infrastructures? How are we storing all the information that you are collecting? And are we able to provide tools that can efficiently uh, audit this information and offer solutions against cyber attacks, including internal attacks or something like that attempt and sabotage? So this is the question that you can do about critical infrastructures. And I would like to introduce to you our case study here. That is a research and development project in a, a partnership between Inmetro and NESA. NESA means North Energia SI. It's a company in Brazil that is, is responsible for built and uh, uh, NESA built indeed. And now it operates Belo Monte hydroelectric power plant. You can see by this picture here, yes, Belo Monte is a very huge infrastructure that you have in the middle of our country, more specifically in the Amazon forest. And you can see by the picture, uh, you can have an idea about the huge uh, 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 improvement that you have here. Uh, it means we have a power plant. Uh, it is able to generate uh, something around the 1 million megawatts uh, in terms of energy, 11 million megawatts. There are more than 3 million cubic meters of concrete in all this infrastructure and the charge in water and the capacity of the reservoir is something around 62,000 uh, cubic meters per second. That is the, the charge capacity in the uh, power plant, in the electric power plant. So you can have the idea about the huge <laughs> uh, impediment that you have here and about all the conditions that have involved in monitors a search infrastructure. So you have, first of all, a diverse of sensors. It includes PZT sensors, ultrasound sensors, several others. Uh, you also have uh, the possibility of sensing not only the structural health, I mean, the dam and the slopes, but also environmental monitoring because uh, Belo Monte needed to present its compliance with several environmental rules in Brazil. Besides, we also have uh, the possibility of monitoring this CI by using images and software sensors. Today, they estimate they have something around 3,000 points of measurements of points that they want to measure because the system is ongoing, not implemented so far. And all the system that needs to project here needs to collect, store information, and also enable that audit in terms of reliability and transparently. So what can see here in all this, this uh, uh, planner uh, in this project? Because we have a, a amount of data to store. There is a lot of information that you need to do. 
uh, we also need to have an automated process to make the data auditing. And also it's important that this process must be readable and the, uh, must involve uh, uh, the process needs to be to be readable for any organization that will be involved in this monitoring. So what is our proposal here? The project that you developed in the last two years because this project started in 2021. So the first uh, consideration that you need to make here is that you are talking about big data Oh, it means that there's a lot of information. Uh, this big data is related to measurements because uh, every information that you are getting here is related to uh, some kind of measurement or sensing. And also we need to put that or you want to put that inside blockchains. But uh, for a start, you have the first problem related to blockchain that is that it's throughput. Blockchain is not scalable in terms of throughput. Uh, it means that blockchain will not have the same performance that you could have in a centralized system. Uh, so big data is, of course, uh, a challenge when you consider any solution based on blockchain. So what solution we decide to adopt here? We, we opted by the use the off-chain method. That means I have two data sources or two data repositories to store uh, the information that they are gathering. Uh, the first one will be a NoSQL DB that is a centralized database, so he, he can, it can be scaled and it also can uh, be a centralized solution to get high performance. And together with the solution, we also have our blockchain that works like a security mirror to start also partial information that's related with the core information that I put here. Of course, since I am uh, writing my data in two databases and in some aspects they are redundant, but of course we have much more data here than here in the blockchain, it will be necessary to have data recovery procedures that are able to compare this data and assure that the data that I have here in my NoSQL database is so uh, readable like the control information that I have in the blockchain. So in other words, what I'm doing here, I have a process that analyzes information, that stores information in OSQL and puts in the blockchain uh, meta information, I would say, or maybe a, a resume of the main information that I can use to check, to verify my main repository here. So how it does? So let's see the blockchain implementation roadmap. That is our architecture and it's a cloud-based architecture. In our case, we are using the AWS uh, cloud solutions, but you don't need to be restricted to the AWS. Indeed, any other solution, uh, cloud solution that uh, I could adopt it could be useful here because usually they offer the same services, but usually with brand name, different brand names. So I have this architecture and I have different organizations that are taking part on it. So the first idea that I need to have here that I have a cloud-based permission at blockchain network. It means that you are uh, decided to use a solution where all the organizations here are identifiable organizations. And we adopted the Hyperledger Fabric blockchain platform inside the AWS services environment. Uh, besides, uh, we consider that most of our network services are already in the cloud, which means I can use different kinds of services that have the automation here. I don't need to develop my own services. I just need to make use the ones that already are available for me. And besides, uh, I have, like I said before, uh, NoSQL database management that is able to uh, manage the data I am storing off chain. And of course, the rock, this database assures that I can have the scalability to store uh, whenever data amount I need. And also I can have fast querying to this database because it's a, a, a performance oriented part of my solution. And together with this architecture, we also have the independent organizations that they integrate the blockchain network 
and also they make part in the in a distributed consensus here it means that the network reliability the blockchain reliability uh, will rely on the fact that all the organizations the involved in the organizations take part in some aspect in the consensus decision are not centralized the consensus like a private blockchain are establishing a blockchain that is based in a consensus quorum uh, that decides what are the transactions that you compose the next block. And finally, since you are using the Hyperledger Fabric, the idea is that uh, each organization are able to provide a set of peers, and peers, I mean, they are usually virtual machines or containers, and the, these peers will implement all the blockchain features in case of Fabric, the role is related to endorsers, committers, and also the orders. Okay, and what you can say about the data recovery audit information? So, uh, the off-chain approach implies, of course, that I needed to compare the information that I have in my NoSQL database with the information that I stored in the blockchain. And since in the blockchain I have a, a very smaller set of information, I we'll have there something that you are calling here like a cryptographic digest. Usually, if you take any off-chain solution, any usually, uh, usual off-chain solution, they you say you that the, the uh, cryptographic digest will be the same that cryptographic hashes. However, we are also studying the possibility of using similarity hashes that could be interesting to get something like a, a brief set of the data, and so you can check the data in situations, for instance, like uh, partial data loss. And also we, we glimpse that you can use here zero knowledge proof protocols, because it's possible to have a protocol where uh, entities assessing the data in the NoSQL database need to prove to the blockchain that they still have the original data there. So that could be a very interesting approach here. And you see that uh, a suitable solution to perform data checking is using smart contracts. In practice, we, when you consider that, uh, we have a valuable application for smart contracts since they are you, they will be very fine measurements based on, on cryptographic properties. And also, you open the possibility that organizations, the organizations that compose blockchain, can also implement their own smart contracts to verify data in an independent auditing. So it would be a very interesting uh, result in such approach. And if you consider a deeper level in this study, we also will conceive that it is possible to use uh, autonomous blockchain oracles, maybe centralized or distributed, to implement this verification on checking data of chain and uh, verify if the information that I have in blockchain are enough to attest this data authenticity and integrity. In terms of performance issues, we also have an interesting result here because Hyperledger Fabric has a theoretical uh, performance uh, expected in terms of two, uh, 2,000 uh, TPS transactions per second. Uh, but when you are going to uh, this result, the, this two, 2,000 transactions per second, they are only presenting practical scenarios, and the practical scenarios are very difficult to simulate when they are, we are making studies about the performance. So uh, we had a very interesting result when we started to use the AWS Lambda, that are closed services, they are independent services, and more close to the architecture that you usually uh, know, like microservices, and you are able to get a uh, performance around 1.2, uh, 1, 1, 1,200 uh, transactions per second. That is significantly higher than the uh, results that you have in simulations using, for instance, Hyperledger Caliper. That is usually a tool uh, very used to measure the performance in Hyperledger Fabric, or also any test using multi-thread clients that you had done in pure works. And of course, the size block in the blockchain also have a significant impact on performance. It means uh, we can optimize the off-chain verification by aggregating data in packaging, low packages, and reducing so the number of transactions that you're trying to put in the blockchain.
So in our resume, what you could say that you, uh, you learned from so far and that you still want to learn uh, in the future. So first of all, we see that monitoring critical infrastructures is a very fascinating uh, problem and it is usually easy to understand every time when you try to explain what it means to monitor a hydroelectric power plant, people usually understand what we're talking about. And it's a very challenging problem if you consider the aspects related to using blockchain and also metrology solutions. Uh, besides, you have that blockchain critical infrastructures, blockchain-based critical infra infrastructures, it could enable a very interesting aspect that possibilitates the data monetization. It seems something very attractive when you talk about companies that need to implement these blockchains. So it's a topic that's not related to metrology, but it also could be something like an incentive when you consider to incentivize uh, people that develop the solutions to adopt blockchains like a possible approach. Uh, finally, I would say that we have a specific measurement data amounts that generate a big data problem. And of course, when we talk about big data and blockchains, you need to consider new ideas about how you are going to avoid the performance issues that blockchains face. And finally, I would say that the data recovery is also a research topic by itself because it involves the possibility of using interesting cryptographic mechanisms or systems, and also the possibility of to explore to the part of chain oracles that is not only a search for uh, a topic for research, but also could generate new business models for meter manufacturers. Finally, I would like to say thank you to the North Energy SCA that it was or was the funding it was funding this project for us here i have the names of our team that developing this project and i also i will let with you a link for our publications related to this project if you have interest you can check later thank you very much and now Rodolfo, i return to you the work We can't hear Rodolfo. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mello, for the interesting presentation. Now we continue. Uh, the, the time is strict and we don't have, uh, we have time only for one question. If someone would like to make a question, could put on the, on the chat. Otherwise, um, uh, you could also send uh, directly for email for Wilson email. Yes, and my as that email is here. Any question? People can text me. No problem. Okay. Thanks again, Mr. Wilson, for your presentation.